James. She was murdered on the 8th of May in Kailicha. She was stabbed 100 meters from where six other people were shot five minutes earlier. No one followed up that case. We did, because her sister asked us to help. Do you know where we found the suspect? In the Eastern Cape. We brought him back. He is now being detained in Kailicha. We do that because we care for the community. We patrol for them. We give them training. I don't see you doing the same, sir. And I'm tired of the excuses, and I'm tired of you making this a political thing. None of these people tonight, when they see their neighbors being slaughtered on the streets, worry about your nonsense comments about the Constitution and about devolution. They worry about surviving, sir. And I would like to end off with this. I want to graciously invite you to come and patrol without a bodyguard, without a grand car, in normal clothes, with this community tonight, to get the sewage on your shoes that they patrol through. You have a problem, Mr. Minister, because you are removed from reality that the rest of us face. When I visit Mbukweni, I get out of my car and a three-year-old little boy is taking a poo next to the road because he doesn't have a toilet. And you know what? Police don't care if something happens to them there because they don't have the resources to help. When I go to the different gender-based violence deaths at these police stations, especially in the Nyanga cluster or traditional Nyanga cluster, the majority of the detectives have more than 300 dockets on their table. 300 dockets! How do you think you can do an investigation with 300 dockets? It's impossible. And then, the cherry on top, and this is my conclusion, is that many of those detectives have 300 dockets, and it's a constable detective. He just came out of the college. He doesn't even know how, how to spell J88. You expect him to solve the problem. Take any nonsense of somebody who got me as a gathering point today because you regard me as a gathering point. You come here. Shut up! Absolutely. One has tried to stay away from politics when it comes to, to this one. Uh, and, and, unless and until today, I could not have allowed somebody to come, hijack, and uh, begin to confuse people on politics when there are serious matters here. The, the MEC, uh, the new MEC, Allen, uh, I, I think we're developing a, a good working relationship. Here's the thing, Minister Tele is making this a political issue. He talks about partnerships, not the provincial government, not the other NGOs that work in the area, or even the city was invited to this. We are an, a different NGO working in the region with gender-based violence. We represent many victims in this area. Just this morning we were in court again. Then he comes and he starts speaking about freedom fighting and he speaks about political issues. But then he shouts to me to sit down and shut up. I said, no, you shut up. I will not stand back and I will not sit down. You are a public servant. A minister is an elected official. It is not someone that can treat community you know, members like that. We found like the rubbish. suspect in the Eastern Cape. We brought him back. Okay, so I'm going to keep this short. The things that he said, were they accurate? Yes. Are those problems that the police force is having? 100% yes. But that doesn't mean you're dealing with an ally. Let me show you something. He calls BEE the biggest economic catastrophe. He's opposed to sex education at schools. Everybody hated ESCOM when the CEO was black, but now that he's white, he has sympathy. He's pro-guns. Pushes the narrative that people vote themselves into poverty. He's an apartheid apologist. Look at this. And here he's just retweeting another one of Helen Ziller's outright racist tweets. So the reason I'm saying this is because the white savior complex isn't just a white person trying to do good things saying, hey, look at me, look what I'm doing. It can be a white person doing genuine good in the community while still pushing a white supremacist agenda.
Remember, slaves were an asset to their slave master, so they wanted them looked after.